Hey, what you doing? Now? You gonna fuck up with me? You gonna you gonna get shot now? Hello, everyone. My name is Link, the trained and professional, and welcome, welcome the fuck back to Echo. I know we literally just put this game on the shelf, but it an update came out and up games that are on uh, part time, uh, not part time status, but they're like waiting for updates. It's this game and uh, repeat. Those games get higher priority because an update came out. I don't want to fucking play it. So, uh... Yeah, oh, Jesus. Spoof just went out, so he's probably a little energetic, a little freaking out a little bit, but he's okay. Uh, he turned five months old. Oh, my ear is fucking itchy, dude. I don't like that shit. My original intention was going to be to just come on here and bitch about my situation, but I don't think anyone wants to hear that. Uh, besides, I'm more interested in playing the fucking uh, game, so let's just get into it. Let's. I don't even want to wait. I just want to. Let's just go. Load game. This is. I believe it was a Flynn update. Let's check. <coughs> Shut the fuck up. The the fuck, dude. Yeah, it is a Flynn update. So here we are, dude. That's skeevy. After that, she just walked back to her office and shut the door, almost like almost slamming it. Maybe she's not a fan of you queer types. You queer types, motherfucker. Carl puts on a southern drawl for the last bit. Not a fan of you queer types. <laughs> I step out of the car and pop the trunk, moving to gather up my equipment. The sun is starting to get pretty low at this point. There's not really any tall mountains to the east, so Echo sunsets tend to last a while. Maybe, but she seemed alright with Flynn. Carl follows suit. Holy shit! What the fuck, dude? Like, this is a very similar sprite to his old one, but that is updated. That is that is new. I didn't... Ooh. Carl follows suit, though his eyes are still glued to his phone. I can't get over that hole. There's a boy in your car bit. <laughs> yeah, she seemed kind of, I don't know, weirded out with me or something. But she wasn't like that when we met. She was pretty cordial then. As I shut the trunk, I spied Flynn's truck parked behind the house, as well as what looks looks like a faded yellow moped. Moped. <laughs> a faded yellow moped. My dumbass. I just got off of work. I'm sorry. I also haven't recorded in a while. I'm assuming that one is his roommate's. Huh. The ramp shrugs. You are kind of weird. Maybe you did that staring thing you do sometimes. I blink. Do I? Never mind, man. I frown. Carl looks up from his phone long enough to catch my expression. I'm just kidding, making fun of Flynn's hole, dressing you down back in the river. Carl smirks. His eyes are no longer glazed over, and it actually feels like he's looking at me rather than a thousand miles away. We make our way up to the front door, Carl tapping away at his screen. Hard to imagine my house was even bi even bigger back in the day. My parents already have more rooms than they know what to do with. Like, we've got three spare bedrooms, right? But we never have any guests or anything, so they don't get used and just gather dust and stuff. Do your parents make you clean them? Carl rolls his shoulders, idly wiping his hooves down uh, upon the rough palm fiber floor. Welcome, Matt! That was a fucking sentence, wasn't it? This is the uh, Flynn route that we're doing. Sometimes. Knowing Carl, that means pretty much never. Once inside, the familiar, hot, stuffy climate hits the... hits like a wool blanket thrown around me. What sounds like some sort of lo-fi hip-hop is playing in the background from what I assume is Daxton's room. The interior is dimly lit with the, with the exception of a bright white light coming from the ajar fridge. Daxton stands next to it, holding a block of pale cheese. Oh, I don't remember what uh, Daxton's voice was. Is this what you need? <laughs> I'm a salamander. The salamander seem the salamander seems to be peering at us expectantly. Uh no. He raises a brow ridge, craning his neck to look past us. Talking to Flynn. Oh, there's Flynn. Hi. <laughs> the Gila's large self steps out of the laundry room behind beside us, looking at to Daxton. Oh, sorry. Carl gives me a sidelong smirk. That's the provolone. The recipe needs Havarti. Provolone to me doesn't taste like anything. 
It doesn't even have much of a texture. I don't know. It seems kind of boring of a cheese to me. I prefer Parmesan, but that's just me. It's not my favorite cheese. I don't know what my favorite fucking cheese is, but also no one gives a shit what my favorite cheese is. We got an Echo update. Let's just keep fucking playing. The Nagdax in the nerdiest voice ever. <laughs> I can do that. Flint steps past us without much acknowledgement, moving to the kitchen beside Daxton. We have a block of Havari, but it's in the freezer. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> Welcome home. There's this thing called a defrost setting on the microwave. Yeah, but you left the fish and caught all up on, all on top of it. Yeah. Mal, I will not take back my my view of uh, my view of provolone. <laughs> I used to love it. And it's it's a good topping cheese. It's a good adding of thickness, but by itself, it's fucking boring. The pack is sealed. That shouldn't matter. The whole freezer kind of kind of reeks. Like I said, the package is sealed. That shouldn't matter. With a shrug to Carl, I move in and set my equipment down next to the kitchen island. All right, I'll be right back, guys. Spoof's being a dick. Come here. Come here. Come here, you. Bastard. We'll be right back. Hello. Shh, I wasn't here. Jackass. Alright, let's go. I take a seat on one of the wicker topped bar stools. Carl lingers in the entryway a bit before moving to sit on the stool next to mine. Flynn wordlessly goes to the fridge and grabs two bottles of light beer, popping the tops and setting them down right in front of us. Thanks. I'm not 21 yet legally, you know. Flynn shrugs uncaringly before getting a beer for himself. Looking around, the countertops are pretty free of clutter beyond some Mesa Community College letters and a heavily used black notebook. The notebook is labeled World Building and Fictional History 204. A few water stains have shriveled the edges of the pages. Daxton places the provolone back into the fridge and places the allegedly fishy Havarti on a plastic cutting board. You don't like the way I said black notebook? No note boom. It's the words of the novel, not me. Maybe they should have said African American notebook. I don't know. I'm just, it, I'm just, I'm the messenger here. I am not the author of the words. Meanwhile, Flynn is now at the sink washing vegetables. Dexton grabs a small knife and finally glances back at me. Welcome back, Kay. I wave a bit limp-wristedly. <laughs> ah, that fucking hurt, dude. Ow. <laughs> what? I'm getting old. I'm 23. I'm getting old. Everything hurts. Hey. He smiles, then shifts his gaze to Carl. The ram looks up from his phone a little apprehensively. And Kay, hey, um... I've seen you before, but I forgot your name. Uh, Sam, Sam something? Hey, Bree. What's up, Bree? Everyone's home now. Carl. He answers, his voice quiet. Oh. Well, good to meet you. Finally, you're kind of in and out of here real quick, like, when you're, you come by. Carl shrugs. Yes, I'm... The Ram's gaze flicks back to his phone, Carl typing something. Daxton frowns slightly before shifting his focus back to cheese cutting. Fuck it, you know what? I can't, I can't wait. Fucking... Hey, Carl. Next day is yelling, loving, okay, cucumber. I got something to get nothing in here on Saturday. Uh, what, what? No, oh, this is a job interview? Yeah. I thought it was just feeling a bit. Don't even tell me about this at all. The brain didn't make it hurt. <coughs> it's great, where at? Go to the typing. He's just feeling a bit tired around the maze of his metal. I'm painting, 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 and trying to be like. Print copy is bringing people to poster. Oh, I was nasty. <laughs> a print copy by the mall? I know of it. What do they pay? Minimum wage. Not that it matters, though. Dexon looks slightly confused. Carl's parents are pretty well off. Flynn stops what he's doing, going to the fridge and taking out a box of strawberry popsicles. I prefer whole milk, the real shit. 
Fuck your two percent. Skim milk can go die in a hole. Almond milk is an imposter. Soy milk? Soy juice. Fuck soy. Fuck anyone that looks like soy. Bitch. He drops it down on the counter beside Daxton. The salamander startling some... The... What? The... Beside... He drops it down on the counter beside Daxton. The salamander startling some. Looking to Flynn. Then the box. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Flynn points to the Hen's Ice Cream label above a logo of a weather vane of, with a chicken on it. Carl's Parents Company. Daxton lets out an astonished huff, looking at some, at some sign of fib on Flynn's muzzle. No way. Way. I'm the ice cream boy. Oh, I didn't know that was their fucking claim to fame. I thought it was just like years of, like, being in the town, maybe? I don't know. It's weird, I never actually fucking thought about that shit. Uh, I am taking uh, medication to curb the burping. Dexton blinks, seeming to look at Carl in a new light. That's really cool! Carl looks sidelong, then back to Daxton. Glad you think so, I guess. Flynn takes the popsicle back to the freezer, returning the, to his station at the sink. Just make sure the clothes you got all fucking fit right. Can't remember the last time I saw you dressed up. It fits, dude. My parents dragged me to all sorts of black tie event stuff, where I have to stand around and lie about my career goals. You haven't done that in ages. I went to the charity gala thing two years ago. Holy shit, fucking... I'm not doing this again, you cunt. Fucking bug on my screen and shit. I got nail polish on and shit. You ain't fucking with me. You mean 20 pounds ago? Oh shit! Fat shaming is hilarious! Dickwad? Most of it's muscle. I'm not calling you fat lard ass. I'm saying that when it comes time for the interview and you come in with a hoodie and cargo pants, they're gonna think you don't have to give a fuck. I mean, I kinda don't, you know. Oh the fuck you don't? You really looking forward to disappointing the shit out of your folks again? They're used to it. Jesus fucking Christ! <sighs> Daxton and I exchange an awkward glance. I'm half tempted to follow Carl's lead and start pretend texting. You worked at the freight warehouse for years and you were miserable. Can't blame me for not looking forward to the same sort of thing. <laughs> Carl feigns a raspy chuckle, though by the jittering of his hooves against the bar stool, it's apparent he's tense. And now I have my own house! I see his slitted gaze shift briefly to Daxton, who looks like he's con concentrating very hard on cheese cutting. Mostly. And print and design, that's basically working with all the same computer shit you do for your art crap. Seeming to note an opportunity to diffuse, Daxton chimes in. You're an artist, Carl! <laughs> Shit, by, like, the loosest definition of the term, I guess. I mean, fucking same. The thing I'm most proud of drawing is Nigel the Turtle. Nigel the Dapper Turtle. I'm very proud of him. Flynn just rubs his temple some, shifting his attention back to cooking. He places the freshly watched vegetables into a metal pot on the stove with one of those steamer lid things on top. What kind of are you? You don't seem like the oil-based pastoral type. The fuck? How do you? How would you know that? Carl blinks. I hear Flynn grunt derisively, the clicking of the stove top audible as he turns the nozzle nozzle for the gas. The gas. The fucking gas. Oh. Chillag. Look, I'll I'll do the fucking thing again. Ah. Oh. Little no fun. Hey, it's fucking fun. It's fucking fun, you. We're gonna jump right behind him. We're gonna the floor. Fuck him. His heavy tail flicks behind him, lightly slapping the floor. Oh. That was fucking nasty. I realize he's trying to get my attention, his eyes meeting mine, then moving to Daxton, and then finally flicking to a textbook by the dishwasher. Art History 101. Historical Perspectives and Fundamentals. 
Glancing back, I think I see the corner of Flynn's mouth twitch up at me before he turns back around to pot his to the, his pot of veggies. It's still kind of weird seeing Flynn in a work outfit all the time. In high school, he was more of a jeans and jacket kind of guy. A southwestern rockabilly who didn't like rock and roll. His work slacks are pretty baggy and definitely hide the definition of his legs. Flynn got a V-shaped physique, though, and through and through. Narrow calves, but thicker thighs, and a sizable rump. Uh, when he bends forward a little, I can see the uh, outline of it all. Uh, the lute side of my mind is starting to wonder if he's doing it on purpose. Why would he be, after what he said this morning? Uh, pastorals? I'm not very good at backgrounds or anything. <laughs> Pussycure, then. Very snazzy stuff, that. The salamander smiles at Carl, showing his rounded cheeks. Carl just looks at him confused. Um, I decide now is not a good time to interject and spare Carl from Daxton's entry-level college art class inquiries. Carl draws pop culture character stuff mainly, I think. Hey, crushes. I haven't really checked out his portfolio profile in a while. Superheroes, comics, that sort of thing. It's really good stuff. It's not... He pauses, shifting his phone in his paws akin to rolling putty. Since superhero movies became really popular, everyone draws that stuff now. Most better than me. It's kind of a dead-end style, I guess. Can't make any money from anything I make. Aww. Carl sounds more like he's quoting someone rather... Quoting someone... Something, rather than starting an act... Stating an actual opinion. Fuck. I should put my glasses back on. Daxton raises a brow, nodding in acknowledgement. There's a pause, the only sound, the bubbling of the boiling water and Daxton's knife hitting the plastic cutting board. Well, now if you draw them with their clothes off, the salamander tries to put on his most innocent face. That lasts for about three seconds before breaking out into a wry smile at Carl's groaning, the ram taking another long swig from his beer. He's grinning too now, though. Everyone online tells me that, but I don't know, man. Every time I try to draw Chaos Wolverina's tits, they just look like big-ass furry eyes stuck to her chest. <laughs> what the fuck? Daxton laughs, and I find myself chittering a bit, too. You could try drawing guys instead, of, instead if women are giving you too much trouble. you like that, wouldn't you, Chase? I don't like superhero stuff that much. Well, I wouldn't like you if you did, Carl. I've written a few awkward sections in my day. You're a writer? That I am at least trying to be. I'm taking creative writing classes at me. <laughs> the folks really wanted me to go into marketing like them, but I'm not really into it. That's lucky. I'm having to go into debt for it, so I'm not sure if I'm that lucky. Hopefully one of those, one of the books I'm working on sells well. Most people don't read these days. The salamander places the cut up cheese upon the slices of rye bread and then puts the bread on a cooking tray, sighing as he looks to Flynn. Not everyone can suffice off of coming home from work and staring at the wall for hours like you, Flynn. Some people like some um, degree of mental input, yeah. What? Huh? Flynn flicks the stove top off, his eyes lulled and his brow ridge furrowed. Jackson passes him with the tray of rye and Havarti, sliding it in the oven. You call the shit you write mental input? The Gila stops what he's doing, squinting at Daxton. This is uncomfortable. Did you defrost the Havarti, or did you seriously spend the past 15 minutes cutting into a frozen block of cheese? This side of the house is like an oven with the habitat running like it is, and cheese is warmed up on his own after a while at room temperature. Flynn throws up his hands, visibly exasperated. It wouldn't have taken you 15 damn minutes to cut a few slices of cheese if you just defrosted it. Are you in a rush or something? What do you mean about him staring at the wall for hours? The salamander looks standoffish now, his arms crossed. My question seems to have been ignored. Might be. Daxton, what sort of stuff do you write? Surprisingly, Carl is the one to butt in this time. Daxton turns, getting out some plates. Man, science fiction and fantasy. You know what, like, uh, Dastra, right? Carl takes another drink of beer, rubbing his beard in thought. Sort of? I don't really watch that stuff. Oh, they're probably thinking of Andromeda. 
Uh, it's that space exploration starship show from this. Oh no, Star Trek. In the sixties with sexy green aliens. I don't think we'll go straight to Andromeda. Like people know who the fuck that. What the fuck that is. Daxton snaps his fingers. Yes, that one. People draw a lot of porn of them. I'm aware. Anyway, I used to watch a lot with my little brother growing up. I got into the whole peace in the cosmos thing through science. Thing, someone, something fierce. The story for each episode were based on real science. The salamander finishes setting out the plates, bumping his fists together and smiling a bit sheepishly. I'm taking a few physics and engineering courses at Mesa to try to better understand it all from my own writing. <laughs> Makes sense. I also really like the whole diplomacy part. The whole ultimate goal of the first contact with peace and learning. You don't really see that much anymore. Yep. Not just one episode from season six of Frontier. It's a really good example of that. And it really inspires a lot of what I'm writing in my story. Oh shit. My phone vibrates in my pocket. A message from Leo. Hey, you're not at the motel? A sort of sinking feeling takes hold in my chest. I can feel Flynn looking at me from over the counter as I type my reply. With Carl, Daxton, and Flynn about to eat dinner. When I look up again, Daxton is still chatting away to Carl about the Adastra episode. Um, I'm not really paying attention anymore. He's serving up the steamed vegetables and the fancy cheese bread fresh from the oven. The bread looks a little burnt around the edges, uh, but, that, but maybe it's supposed to be that way. Of course you are. Fuck you, Leo! My fingers reflexively squeeze tighter on my phone. Flynn quietly walks around the counter, stepping behind me to look over my shoulder. Fuck you, Flynn! This ain't none of your goddamn business! At first, I think he's gonna say something, but he doesn't. He's silent. With a sharp exhale, I begin typing my reply. We can all hang out tomorrow? Found some interesting stuff for my project at City Hall. Flynn makes a noise, though I can't really tell whether it's uh, encouragement or disapproval. Uh-oh. Need to talk to you one on one. Oh boy. Oh boy. I reply. What about? He responds almost instantly. You know exactly what. At this point, I realize Carl's looking over at my screen as well. I'd call him and Flynn both out for being rude, were this any other time. Daxon, meanwhile, just looks at it all with a concerned expression on his face. Like up. Don't worry about it. Carl and Flynn both look at me expectantly as my thumb hovers over the reply button. Should I even respond at this point? I have no clue how he could have found out about Flynn and I, if that truly is what he means. Leo's never been really good at getting his point across through text. He's failed many in English class growing up. He always preferred to talk face to face, so maybe if I can be convincing enough in person, he won't be so worried? Maybe I should just tell the fucking truth. I hate this! I'm not even sure I did anything really wrong, but I can't help but feel like garbage. And now my pseudo-infidelity lying game is becoming a spectacle. I decide I might as well respond with at least a somewhat true response now. No? I shove my phone back in my pocket and Flynn steps back. This is so fucking stupid. Mal wants you to sign their face. What? <laughs> Carl just looks at Flynn with a flat expression. What? Carl shrugs. Like I said to Chase earlier, man, I won't say anything. Daxton quietly chews on his very crunchy cheese bread, looking at us from the other side of the counter. Drama? Yep. He moves from my side to back over around the kitchen island, grabbing his plate of food and taking a big mouthful of broccoli. Jesus, Mal. You want us to watch some mas a dra a gastra? Ugh. The salamander, salamander, salam, salamander, apparently is what I said. Salamander smiles awkwardly, gesturing to the small living room area. I'm down. Carl holds up his bottle of beer before taking a swig. Case, Flynn. I sigh. Usually TV is a bit too passive for me when I'm trying to get my mind off stuff. Most often I turn to video games instead. Still, Daxton seems pretty passionate about this. I guess it can't hurt. Sure. Though all I've ever seen of it are the few are a few of the movies, I think. Oh, which ones? Uh, the ones where all the lens flare and chrome. 
Dexon looks back as if a bad taste just settled on his palate. Ugh, I tell me, brother directed those ones. They tried way too hard to be edgy and action-packed. Completely ignored proper characterization. Like Lieutenant K Lieutenant G Gimokra. G really? Gimora. <laughs> Firing the plasma emitter at the former ambassador? She's completely non-violent in the original series. She took a vow of peaceful resolution following the violence cascade that destroyed her home world in the first season. But the writers just thought it would look cool for the trailer, so if they just showed her dishonoring again a guy while screaming her head off. I really like the thought-provoking philosophical stuff, not the protagonist running around killing people. This is a fake show. <laughs> that through the sheer act of voicing a character that's getting pissed about it, I'm actually getting mad. Fuck the whatever the hell brothers. <laughs> Dexton huffs, rubbing his fist against his scaly brow. I'm not sure exactly how to respond. Yeah, it's pretty not great when that happens. I like the space battles, though. Of course, they were made to appeal to a casual audience. I blink. Dexton quickly holds up his hands, his eyes widening. Oh, I didn't mean that as an insult or anything. Uh, no offense taken. I offer him a reassuring nod, taking a bite of the steamed veggies. They certainly taste fresh, and <laughs> your food smells so good! <laughs> this, uh, Exciting atmosphere. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. This is a multi-sensorial experience. Multi-sensory. Sensorial. What my fucking... Words that I can't think of right now? Flynn must have gotten these in Peyton. Dexton's stuck having to deal with us filthy casuals tonight. Again, sorry, that's not what I meant. No, I know what you mean. You dig it because you grew up with the original shit, and you have all sorts of fuzzy feelings about it. I'm actually kind of surprised to hear Flynn chime in. Yeah, I mean, looking back, the original series is pretty dumb and cheesy. But it wasn't for you when you were a kid, or the... or the tit dirts who watched it back in the 60s. Yeah, dude, back when we were kids, Leo's dad would get us uh, a whole bunch of random VHS tapes from the thrift shop in Colville every now and then. Ran out of breath! <laughs> oh, God! <sighs> like really dumb kung fu movies or straight to video slasher flicks. It didn't even matter if they were R rated. Sometimes in summer nights, we'd gather at Leo's place and watch a bunch of them until almost morning. They were all terrible. It was great. <laughs> I found myself smiling a bit. I'd almost forgotten about all that. Jeez, Flynn would always get super into them. He would yell at the screen every time the characters did something stupid. Carl chuckles into his paw, grinning toothily at the gila. Oh man, you'd get so butthurt. <laughs> you'd start stomping around and slamming Leo's cabinets until you got in trouble. Flynn looks off to the table. If lizards could blush, I'm almost certain he'd be doing so now. Whenever there was someone with a gun on screen, they never had any trigger discipline and completely held their guns wrong. And every time, every movie, someone was being chased by some killer or whatever, they completely forgot how to run. Oh <laughs> yeah, and you kept counting how many times everyone tripped. You had a little notepad with your trip tally. Dexon looks completely, absolutely tickled by this revelation about Flynn. That sounds hilarious. I wish I had friends like you guys growing up so I could have done that sort of thing. Flynn waves dismissively. It was alright. I remember we could never do it when TJ was around. Satanic propaganda and all that, right? <laughs> Uh, he would have been fine with it if we had eased him into it. We could have started him off with Bloodfire Babes of Babylon. <laughs> Carl nods sagely, sipping at the last bit of his beer before getting up to retrieve another from the fridge. Go, Flynn, you want it? Yeah, maybe. Daxton looks pretty elated. The amphibian's slightly chubby cheeks puffed out to some as he grins. I can tell some of the really shocky episodes from the first few seasons of the original series. I'll put those on. Sounds good, dude. Daxton sets his plate down, fast walking to the TV in the living room. After a moment, Carl looks over at me. Nerd alert. Flynn goes to the slide his now empty plate into the sink, slapping Carl on the back of his head as he passes. 
fucking rich coming from your neck, beard ass. Hey, I'm being I mean it endearingly. Across the room, Daxon waves at us. Aw, oh, look at this. This is nice. Why am I getting creepy ass music? Hey, I think I got it. The internet kind of snow out here because of the satellite, but it's a Viking. Flynn meanders on over, lounging on a love seat on the left side of the living room. His tall stature results in his legs hanging far over the edge, the lizard scratching his exposed chest with a yawn. He cranes his long neck to look at back at me and Carl. You two tits gonna sit all the way back there? Hold on, I'm coming. Carl gives me a little nudge, and we follow suit, beers, and grasp. Looking at Flynn now, I realize that part of me wishes I could go over there and lay beside him. More practically, I sit in the recliner in the center of the room, while Carl and Dax take over the so take the other sofa. Okay, so in this episode, Captain Amicus lands on our planet in the year 1968, but he's looking for technology to stop the uprising in the future, but Dax, shut up! No spoilers, dude! Alright, fine, fine. Aww. Apparently the, un the traumatizing part is coming up soon. Oh, the picture on the TV changed, that's awesome. Captain Amicus, Am Amicus, the slime woman, there in the engine room. This leaves me no choice, cadet. Captivate self-destruct protocol, bacon 199 and 909. But Captain, there's no time to debate. Get to the escape pods. Captain, the test results just came in. They aren't slime women, they're cell women. They're multiplying as a result of some sort of cancer-like phenomenon! By God, Cadet, this changes everything! Deactivate the self-destruct protocol! If they are, there are cells on our ship is, on, is, is one sick patient! Cadet, flood engineering and radiation with radiation pulses at three second intervals! Maximum output! I still don't understand why the cell women have tits. Why are the women- why are they women in the first place? Oh, why all the lady officers don't wear pants? Carl takes another glug of his beer, and this being his third so far by my count. I was gonna show you the bad one. I said I was gonna show you the bad one, guys. Dexton looks a bit defensive, leaning forward on the edge of his seat, his plump tail wrapped around the armrest. Carl idly chucks a throw pillar at the salamander. I'm not complaining, dude. He laughs a little, and Daxon eases, chuckling it, chucking it back at him with a little more force. Carl takes the blow like a champ, in the, in the regard that he doesn't even react beyond smiling goofily. It's surprising to see Carl comfortable like this around a stranger. I can't help but feel ha kind of happy. He's still, he can still come out of his shell every now and then. It's fucking dumb. How does anyone take this shit seriously? They don't. We certainly aren't. <laughs> I glance over towards Flynn, who's digging in his pockets for his phone. He taps the unlock button, squinting at the bright screen. The black and orange scales on his face seeming to glow silver and yellow in the light. I find myself leaning forward a little, trying to read the tiny text on the screen. It takes me a moment to realize that Flynn isn't looking at the screen anymore, he's looking at me. He huffs, moving the screen away from my view. Oh, fucking, you get to read all my shit, but yeah, I don't get to read your shit. Mick, fuck you, anyway. Move the screen away from my point of view before he begins to text something. Is it? No, it's not Leo. Flynn stares at his phone some, a sort of expectant expression upon his muzzle. Hey, I don't mean to be all prying and chuck, but who's Leo? Daxton seems to be asking me this. My ex. Flynn glances back for a moment, though says nothing. Oh, Leo's a guy? Yes. Cool. The salamander frowns in an acknowledging fashion, nodding his head some before re refocusing his attention back to the TV. Captain Amicus is in the midst of being attacked by the slime women. I thought they were cell women. There's differences. Even with the prosthetics and lighting, I can tell that all the slime cell women, thank you, are pr actually just a bunch of amphibians in a green body in green body paint. Flynn's phone vibrates again. He taps at it, clearly not really much of a fast texter. After finishing his text, he hastily shoves the phone back into his pocket. I'm heading out. He pushes himself up off the couch and ruffling his shirt before meandering over to a, toward a bowl on the kitchen to get his truck keys. Wait, what? Oh, come on, slithead. 
Daxton briefly snurks at Carl's turn before seconding. Yeah, this is actually pretty fun. Where are you going? Oh, you should get back to the motel before the others start bitching. The fuck? I feel my face grow hot, my fist starting to clench. Okay, maybe drop the mysterious act, asshole. Flynn just heads out off the front door, flicking me off as he exits. Flynn! He's out the door without another, without further comment, and I can hear the chirping sound from his truck outside as he unlocks it. Fucking Asperger's and French fries, right? Fun has Asperger's. Asperger's. Carl shakes his head. No, he's just trying to look cool. It isn't working. Dude gets uncomfortable with casual social stuff, I think. He's 25 years old, this is bullshit. People of any age can have a mental illness, that's... <sighs> I wish he'd just be straight with me. <laughs> you want him to be gay with you, don't fucking mince words. Daxton snickers, though, quickly shakes his head, stifling it. We're on the same wavelength there, Daxton. What? If he was being straight with you, you wouldn't be getting so pissed off about this, I think. Straight as in you two not macking on each- I get it! <laughs> they knew people were gonna make that fucking joke! <laughs> oh, Jesus. I sigh letting myself sink back into the sway- the suede fabric of my chair. It automatically reclining for me the more pressure I put upon it. I'm starting to regret Carl finding out about all this. If he didn't know, it would- it wouldn't be much of a... thing. It wouldn't have- it would have been easier to just pretend it never even happened in the first place. And I wouldn't have to deal with lying to the guy I love for the most- for most of my teenage life. I'm gonna hit play again if that's alright. I'm staring at the ceiling now, but I can feel them both looking at me. Go ahead, I'm just gonna close my eyes for a little while, okay? Got you, dude. We'll wake you if something cool happens. So we'll wake you in the morning. You're <laughs> gonna get a beer, beer, bee. <laughs> Uh, I bet this is where the traumatizing shit comes up. Okay, here we go. I shut my eyes and hear the trademark Adestra music resume. A large paw gently pats my shoulder, followed by audible hoof clomps in the kitchen floor behind me. Alright, must be the morning. TV's off. I stare up at the unmoving ceiling fan above me. In the dark, everything looks all grainy. It seems like the lights are still on, but the dimmer is so low they might as well not be. Must be a salamander thing. Speaking of, him and Carl aren't here anymore? I try to recollect how much time has passed since I closed my eyes. Feels just like a minute ago. As I rise to stand, I feel kind of sluggish for some reason, like my legs are still asleep. My face feels kind of numb, too. I always feel worse after taking naps. I'm not really sure I get the appeal of taking them once a day like my mom does. Moving to the nearby window, I squint at my reflection. Oh, Jesus! I already don't like this! Oh, God! Oh, I- Oh, God! I don't like this! That smile is creepy as fuck! I don't like this! Mal, are you trying to keep watch on fucking this? Fucking this! I look like hell. And... Who shaved off my goatee? Oh, brother, 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 BROTHER! I blink. It's still not there. I'm not that heavy of a sleeper, so I'd have felt if someone was doing that. I don't think Carl's that cruel, is he? I turn, peering toward, da toward Daxton's room. His door is open and his bed is empty. They left me here? Why? My phone vibrates in my pocket. It's Leo. I'm coming. What? I've heard you say that before, but it's totally inappropriate right now. I text him back, though I seem to have caught an awful case of the Flynn. My texting dexterity is awful right now. Everyone left. I think I'm alone at Flynn's now. While I'm at it, I also send a quick text to Carl and Flynn asking where they are. The vibrating noise comes from the kitchen after I send Flynn's message. I must have left it when he went out. When I walk into the kitchen, I see the phone po uh, propped, up into, uh, propped up against the key bowl on the island countertop. 
The screen's brightness illuminates everything around it with a picture on my face. It's low resolution, like he cropped and stretched it himself from the one of my social media pictures. The photo is from a class trip I took sophomore year to the ca Carbord Caverns. Mm. I'm wearing a hard hat and it doesn't fit. The way the phone is propped up, it almost looks like it's on display. It's a weird way to place it. I know I shouldn't snoop through his phone, but if he wants to act all mysterious and dismissive, he's leaving me not much of a choice. Also, someone shaved my goatee off. That warrants enough of an emergency, I guess. Why don't you just fucking touch your shit to make sure that it's actually you and not, as Mal was saying in the chat, the creepy thing that showed up at the end of Jenna's route? <laughs> he said, I remember what that is. Isn't that just, like, a dream we were having about, uh, when we told Leo that we were leaving and when he broke the phone? Uh. Wasn't that just a picture of us? Wasn't that just us seeing us? But there's also a ghost thing. I remember there being, like, a dark version of Chase, which I believe to just be the embodiment of some form that has possessed Chase. It was probably the thing that fucking killed uh, Sydney through Chase's body. But, uh, man, dude, I don't fucking know. I don't goddamn know. I tap the screen and my message appears. I'm asking him where he is and telling him that everyone left. Tabbing back, I see one other message. The rest of them have been deleted. It's from someone named Ryan. He has given no he has no given profile picture. The bar is at 33 South Alo Way off of Hankley and Route 93. Winky face. Hankley and 93. I think that's by the casino near the edge of the reservation. I spent most of the day looking at a map of the county. So I think I have a good spatial sense of where it is now. The question is, why did Flynn leave this here with just this message on it? It's like he wanted me to find it. He wanted me to follow him. Jesus, does he think I'm that much of a snoop? Because apparently I am. This time it's my phone that buzzes. Another message from Leo. Hey. Huh? A type of quick response. Have to go. Sorry, Leo. I shove my phone back into my pocket and head outside. It's actually nippy out in comparison to the heat of the day. Sheet clouding covers most of the stars above. There's actually a tinge of humidity in the air, which is surprising. We usually get less than an inch of rain this time of year. Another text? Leo again. Are you sirs? I sigh, putting my phone back and getting my keys out. I think of something and apologize later. I don't feel nearly as sluggish as I did before, thankfully. Once inside my car, I put the keys in the ignition, enough to keep the inside lights on while I fiddle with the GPS. 33 South Low Way. Got it. Looks like I'll, it'll be about a 22 minute drive according to this thing. DUDE! Where are you going? I look over. Carl and Daxon are staring at me through the passenger window, concerned expressions on their faces. Well, a concerned expression on Daxton's face. Carl just looks drunk. What? Where have you guys been? With you? Why the hell did you guys shave off my goatee? Dude, are you, like, allergic to Havarti or something? It was actually Gorgon Joe. The Havarti Flynn wanted was sketchy. Carl smiles lopsidedly at Daxton. Dastardly. What are you... I reach up to grab my chin, feeling the familiar scruff of dark brown hair upon my paw pads. I feel my heart start to thump heavy in my chest. What the hell? Daxton opens the passenger door. You sure you should be driving? You're kind of wigged out. No offense. I angle the rearview mirror down toward me. Sure enough, there it is on my, there it is on my chin. I'm sorry, I could have sworn that it was missing earlier. Well, you were sleeping. It could have been a nightmare. I read all about this stuff online. It's your subconscious playing out your deepest desires, man. I don't think so, Carl. But look, are you guys coming with me? I think Flynn wanted us to follow him. Yeah, we saw the message. I don't know. He's kind of a private guy. If we're wrong, he's gonna be pissed. <sighs> we should think of it like... Like an away mission! Even in the dark, I can practically feel Daxton cringe. 
Oh, God, Carl. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll go with you, but I'll hang back in the car. I'm, s I'm still a bit reeling from the whole facial hair fiasco, but the banter is making me feel better. Uh, you could be tactical support. Uh-huh. This is why I don't usually share my interests with other people. The fuck? Carl clambers into the back seat first, nearly toppling over. Dexon climbs up front, a little tipsy, but he seems to have most of his motor functions intact. Lucky I don't have classes on Fridays. Oh god, it's almost the weekend. Oh god fucking Jesus Christ. I heard you make a noise and then I saw the door open and then I heard a loud clang. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Well, there you go. That was uh all that's been done of the oh shit. Of the uh Flynn update so far. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of Echo One. The next one it'll be Leo, but until then, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the trend up official speaking of all the voices in my head when I say until next time. Fare thee well. Bye everyone! Wave. I'm fucking excited. I want to see this shit. Oh, God.